In the United States, where Third Stage is based and where I live, uh, we love our big box retailers. Walmart, Costco, Target, those are some examples of big box retailers in the United States. And with digital transformations, it's no different. We like the idea of a one-stop shop, low-cost, scalable solution. Today, I want to talk about the usage of big box system integrators and what that means to your digital transformation. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients through their digital transformation journey. I'm here with Brian Potts, our Chief Operating Officer. Thanks for being here, Brian. Thanks for having me. Sure. So, Brian, you recently wrote an article about this whole concept of big box system integrators, kind of yeah. tying the big massive system integrators to the whole Walmart business model. And while both sets of companies, the Walmarts of the world and the big system integrators are very successful, very profitable companies, there's strengths and weaknesses to that model. And one of the things you talk about in the article is, is quality mm -hmm. and the trade-offs that come along with that. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so the, the concept of, of quality is, is when, you've, when you've got some uh, concept of giving everything to everybody and trying to cover a wider range of services or products, quality can sometimes get a little bit diluted, and that's the case that we found in, in the, you know, the system integrators. Um, you know, compare it to, you know, take, take Walmart, for example. Do you go there to get, you know, organic produce? Not necessarily. They do have some, and, you know, but it's not what they specialize in. And if you're really focused on quality, you want to make sure you go to those, call it boutiques or organizations that specialize in certain arenas, you know, things like data security and software selection, maybe some things that soft, the, the larger integrators kind of do, but not really well. Right. So is it fair to say then, if I'm a big multinational company, and I'm looking for a big system integrator and I want a, a large number of resources that I'm trading scale for quality? I'm getting a higher quantity, but perhaps lower quality? Or? Perhaps and, and more than likely. And the reason is that we do that is it's, it's easy. Um, it, it's an easy step. You'd say, well, we can do everything. And under, understand, you know, as we get into this, where, where the the, the resellers are coming from the big system integrators that offer this. It's part of it, and a very small part of this most likely is for revenue recognition. You know, you can get a little bit extra here, a little bit extra here, but really what is driving this is control. They want control over your entire project. So the big, big money is on the actual system integration. They're funneling resources in. They're managing large, large projects. If, if any third party comes in and there's any risk to their revenue stream, that's their concern. So that's why they're, you know, they, they're offering everything across the board. Even if it's not the highest quality, they want to maintain control of the entire project and process. Right. So another topic or category you address in this article is the whole concept of flexibility. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so again, when you, when you get a, a large system integrated from, they, they, they do call it ERP implementation very, very well. They've got a, a process and a model that, that works very well. When they start doing these more obscure things that they, they don't always do a lot or they haven't built a, a real knack for, there's a lack of flexibility. They've got, they've got training that goes across their team, probably very good training, but it teaches everybody to do things the exact same way. At the, the outset, that might be what a, a, a company says, we want that. We want a consistent format. However, when you're getting into areas that need a little bit more uh, customization or a little bit fluidity that, that goes outside of what has been pre-programmed, they don't have the capability to adapt, meaning they know one way of doing things and that's the way that you're going to go. If you need to look in a different direction, um, and we use the example of software selection, so they're, they're programmed to make a set of requirements, match it against a few solutions that they, that they provide. They don't have the understanding or the capability to look across the board at you know, maybe tier two systems, maybe best of breed, and looking in, in maybe some different directions that would be in the best interest of the clients. Right. Now, what about best practices? That's another term we hear, not just from system integrators, but uh, resellers and vendors in the space. How does that concept of best practice tie into the big box? You really want to get me going here. So the term best practice is, uh, it ekes me a little bit because everybody uses it. It's just, it's thrown out without any forethought. But what best practice is when you're talking to a software vendor, when you're talking to a, a system implementer, best practice is what they do as an organization, what they can provide in, in the best direction of, of your industry. It, it does not necessarily mean what is best for you as an organization. So just to clarify, when we hear best practice, you know, take that with a grain of salt. So when, 
when we look at a big box best practice, what they are doing is what's best practice for their organization. Um, without naming names, you take you know some of the, the big five, some of the auditing firms that want to help you through digital transformation. They might be recommending things like you need to go AI, you need to build blockchain. Those sound really cool, and it's hard to argue with those because there's not a lot of history and case study on those. So as an organization, you're taking them as your advisor and saying that's what we need to do. But what they're doing is they're sending you in the direction that basically pads their pockets. Um, you know, emerging technologies, more obscure stuff that sounds really cool might be in your best interest, but it also might not. It might be what the software integrator is just prescribed and trained to recommend because it, it supports all of their supporting practices. It, it keeps that, you know, that first concept that we talked about with the, the quality. It allows them to keep control of the project. It allows them to prescribe their, quote, best practices that, that lead to their service offerings. So, yeah, um, you know, it's it, you, we use the the big box example, and it, it's kind of like if you go in and you, you let's say you you go into Target and you say I want to buy a TV. Nothing is Target, but um, you want to buy a TV. You say what is the best TV? The salesperson has been programmed to send you to the best TV that Target sells. They're not going to send you to another specific retailer to buy a TV that Target doesn't have. They're going to send you to a a, t a target brand and model. So it's the same with the system integrators. They're, they're prescribed and trained to do just that. Right. And it's not even just the best practices of a firm. A, a lot of times it's individual people within the firm that are happen to be on your project. So a lot of times we'll be working with clients that have a system integrator team of consultants and their definition of best practices is what they did on their last project or the last time they worked in that industry. Have you found that to be the case with these well, firms? Yeah, and that, it kind of ties because what they did in their last project was what was previously trained and prescribed by that same organization. It's it's a school bus mentality. So you get a lot of call it younger and experienced consultants. They, they need you know to get their feet wet. But what they learn in one organization, if they continue prescribing and selling and and maintaining only that, is all that they know. So. Just the, the ability as, a, as you're going through a digital transformation, look a little bit outside of what's necessarily being recommended. It might be what you need and it might be best, but keep a mindset that there's other opportunities and other services available that might, might work. Yeah. It might and, work better. And oftentimes you need to be able to think outside the box of best practices to be able to solve a problem to figure out what do I do when those best practices don't work for my organization. Right, yeah. Yeah. which ties back to flexibility and you know these all kind of tie together in, in making sure that you maintain control of what you need as an organization not just jumping to the you know the, the quote easy fix of let's just have one one person do it all maybe yeah. they can do it all but you should vet them out right you know, recently had a, a contractor at my house because you know a number of things need to be done he's kind of a handyman and he got down to you know have some plumbing issues and he, he went in and he, he realized that he didn't have the tools or necessarily the expertise to clean out the sewer to the degree that we needed so he recommended we go somewhere else that's the kind of advice that you want to look for and the kind of mindset that you want to have uh, when you're going through a digital transformation as well there's you know some things that not that might require special attention right yeah it's good advice so one of the big questions on people's minds as they look to their digital transformation and the system integrator that's going to support it is the whole issue of cost. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on cost and how it ties back to system integrators? Yeah, so there's uh, there's different views on that. A lot of people think that the larger system integrators are, are naturally going to cost more, and they do, but not for the reasons you might think. What you look at with, with cost is it ties to quality. It ties to making sure that you, you get exactly what you need. And, and take this as a case. If you walk into, well, let's call it Walmart, um, and you've got a, a, a set shopping list. You can go find all those items that you need, but chances are, and they're, they're lower cost, they probably cost less than maybe some other places, but you're gonna walk out with more uh, because they have you know, candy at the aisle, they've got the cold drinks as you're, as you're walking out. Um, common retail scenario, but that also translates into the system integrator uh, and large consultancies. And what they do is they start padding projects. When they have control that we talked about in the beginning, they just start adding things that you don't necessarily need. So we recently saw a case uh, of a large tier one implementation where a big system integrator had piled in excess of 20% more resources than um, after we did an analysis deemed necessary. And we're talking in the scope of millions and millions of dollars that were basically wasted on people sitting around twiddling their thumbs and reviewing other people's work, you know, 
So also when considering cost, we talked earlier about, about quality. So if you're not getting the top quality, what generally happens when you buy a cheap product? It has to be replaced sooner. That goes also with consultants. Um, if you're getting, call it the school bus mentality, you're getting a bunch of junior consultants who are kind of learning their way and you don't necessarily have the quality that you need or they haven't been trained in a specific area that you need and they're, they're trying to figure it out, you're going to end up paying more outright because it's going to take them longer and then you're going to have to replace them which the replacement cost of consultants is high as well you have to retrain you have to get people onboarded again so the cost tends to add up when you're uh, when you're don't have the quality of, of top consultants that you need um, what the other thing to consider is that the large consultancies pull from the exact same pool of resources that we all do there's a, a, a set number of certified SAP Oracle consultants on the marketplace we all have access to them. Now, some of the large consultancies draw them in with sometimes with large salaries. However, they keep their, their cost competitive by hiring, you know, the, the young, young guns, call them, you know, the school bus mentality, training them up and then hopefully keeping them on board as long as possible. Um, what we find is a lot of the senior consultants don't like the, the restrictions and the, you know, the long hours and the travel that are sometimes go with uh, the large consultancies that are expected to earn the higher salaries. So they tend to, to go elsewhere. So you're not necessarily getting the best resources with the large consultancies. And again, that relays back to cost. You're getting maybe more than you need. You're, you're paying more for less quality, having to replace, and uh, it doesn't always add up in your favor. Right. Yeah, no, the hard part too is hiring any sort of system integrator, whether it's one of the big ones that's going to bring an army of consultants or one of the smaller boutique system integrators, is they're the experts, they have the knowledge, and you don't as an, as an implementing organization. So you, you mentioned a case study of a, a recent client of ours that had, I think they had 140 full-time consultants on the project for this big global SAP implementation. And you know we did the analysis and found that's too many in that case too. But as a implementing organization, unless you do this all the time, you don't know if they, whether it's 140 full-time people or whether it's half that, or if you really need more than that, it's hard to know. So you're putting a huge amount of trust in the system integrator and they're armed with, a, with the advantage of knowledge, whereas you're right. at a disadvantage. And that's the reason why the one-stop shop in this case doesn't work. What you need in, in the case you're describing is quality assurance. A, a third party to validate what, you know, if you've got one organization that's basically funding their own project, there's nobody to oversee that. You need that third party, that expertise, that independence to come in and work alongside everybody that we all need to work together and make sure the client's successful, but um, they need to be vetted and validated. So, right. you know, yeah, the client isn't, doesn't, isn't expected to have that, um, but don't just assume that, you know, hiring one of the big guns to come in is, is going to handle everything. Right. So what are some of the situations where a system integrator is a good fit for a client and maybe cases where it's not? You know, where, what are the pros and cons there? Well, I mean, you've talked a lot about uh, system integrator selection and making sure they're a good fit. It's, you know, you've got the, the functional understanding expertise, so making sure that they, they understand your processes and they've worked in your industry, certainly understand the software. And when you talk about software, with the recent burst of, of We'll call it the, the cloud burst, if that sounds good. A lot of very highly skilled consultants still have not gotten certified on the, on the new cloud technology. So make sure that they can handle you know, whatever version of software that you're implementing. Uh, the other thing is um, uh, general cultural fit. You know, it's easy to talk about but hard to sometimes identify. How do you work as an organization, you know, meeting the people, um, how, how strongly are they going to push you? So if you're looking at a lot of times the, the, the leading top tier one system makers that we're talking about will, will give a strong push. And um, you might say as an organization, that's what I need. You need to tell me what to do. However, you need to do an internal analysis and organizational readiness assessment to understand, are people going to allow themselves to be pushed? Do we have that kind of culture where we can just let somebody tell us what to do and accept it? Um, and that's not always the case. Right. Yep. And that's an area where independent companies like Third Stage that know the market really well can help clients select the right system integrator, the one that's going to best fit their needs and culture and skill set requirements and all that good stuff. Yeah, I think we've talked about it in the past, but when you're selecting software, as important or even more important is selecting the system integrator. Who's going to actually do the implementation for you? 
And that again ties back to the, the talk we had today and making sure you get the right fit. Don't try and put all your eggs in one basket and, and just do a little bit of research and, and validation. Right. Well, that's a great summary of all, all the points, that, that last part you mentioned right there. So I want to thank you for being here on the, on the video today. And, it's an honor. Yeah, thank you. And want to thank you all for your time. And if you'd like to learn more about system integrator selection and how to find the best system integrator for you, I encourage you to download our guide to selecting the right system integrator for your digital transformation. I've included a link below if you'd like to download that. I also encourage you to please like and subscribe to this channel. Hope you found this information useful, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.